Right here, this little gap. Uh, I just, okay. you know, what I realized? I always thought it was just crooked. Turns out, like, no, I'm I chipped my tooth, and it's a gap because that entire side is chipped off. Oh, dang! So, Do you yeah, know yeah. when that happened? Yeah, I know exactly when it happened. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know exactly when it happened too. Like I've chipped my like I've chipped my tooth eating cereal before. Like the, on the front here, there's a little bit of chip, but this one specifically, I was in high school. It was my senior year. I was at a I was at a house party, and this kind of like this guy I grew up with. I won't name any names, but like he was just kind of a you know going down the wrong path. Mm. So. That summer before senior year, his parents sent him to like a military boot camp, like for, you know, for juveniles. Wow. Pretty much troubled youth. Pretty, yeah. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> troubled youth, like juvenile camp. And I guess he met this other guy there that was from our area or he wasn't. I don't know. I didn't ask. But like, anyways, we're at this party and he has his friend. We've never seen him before. We're like, who is this guy? <laughs> and uh, and uh, he's like, oh, this is my buddy. I met him at camp. He's just hanging out with me for like, you know, two weeks or something. But anyways, long story short, like being stupid kids, we were like all chest bumping each other, like as boys do. And uh, that one random guy, and he was like a pretty short, stocky guy, like pretty, pretty like strong looking dude for a high schooler. And like, he's like, let's go, let's chest bump. And I was like, okay, man. Yeah, whatever. And at the time, you know, in high school, I weighed a, a buck 35 and this guy was pushing like 200. <laughs> so like we go to chest bump and I think we're just going to like chest bump, but he gets like a running start. And then before I even am able to like get off the ground, he like just straight spears me <laughs> with his chest in the face and like it hits my jaw up and I just spit out a chunk of tooth. Oh and, like, my God. Yeah, so that I think that's exactly where that chunk of tooth went. <laughs> watch like, it on it just, the YouTube, folks. Yeah. Yeah, watch it on the YouTube. But yeah, that's exactly where. And I've been trying to fix that my entire life. And now I realize that I'm just either going to need to get it capped or like filled in. Ah, uh, wow. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. It gives me character, I think. That's cool, man. Yeah, all my chipped teeth are in the back. You know, I got yeah. I, got, I got my first cap. But Chewing that was nice. just. Well, it's just from eating sugar my whole life, you know. Yeah. So stay away <laughs> yeah. from that sugar, folks. I'm telling you. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, we have wasted a lot of time just talking about random stuff. Let's <laughs> dive into the episode. Folks, welcome to the Pop Culture Field Manual Podcast, sitting right at the intersection of weapons, action, the military, and pop culture. Of course, welcome to the episode. Today, Izzy and I are going to be talking about something Izzy is probably very familiar with as part of his military training was creating these. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Insurgency and then counterinsurgency too, yep. because when I was in Iraq, we were trying to establish and support the current government. Yeah. So the insurgency were actually, they were the bad guys, quote unquote, yeah. in that particular instance. Yeah. No, but today we're going to talk about all things insurgencies, rebellions, and those fighters that are looking for freedom, also known freedom fighters. So anything in pop culture that has to do with these uh, these themes and topics, we're gonna we're gonna talk about them. So yeah, for you for all those that don't know, insurgency or what an insurgency is is the definition is an active revolt or an uprising. So. Right. They're pretty much, you know, all these words are synonyms for insurgency, rebellion, you know, freedom fighters. They're they're all insurgents. You know, they're different right. synonyms for the same different words for the same uh, same kind of thing. Different yeah, drugs for different folks. There's the there's the established government, whatever that is. And then anybody trying to destabilize and take down that government, I guess, maybe through violent means, I guess, uh, maybe. would be considered revolt, rebellion, you know. Otherwise, maybe it's just civil disobedience up to a certain point. Then when you actually start being like, no, we actually want to take down this government and establish a different one or whatever, you're then would, you're the insurgency. Yeah, but wouldn't that – if you want to overthrow the government and establish your own, wouldn't that be kind of be like a coup? I mean I thought a coup was like a military kind of military thing. Military uprising? Yeah, I mean cuz yeah, oh, okay. what you know, it, it I don't know, maybe it all falls under the it's very the, the rubric of yeah. revolution, right? Yeah. You know, like what you know, if you're right, you can be a revolutionary. Well, who's yeah. yeah, who's doing it? Yeah. Yeah. Is it like civilians then it's an insurgency, but if it's a military like general going rogue, is it a coup? I've yeah. always heard coup is yeah, being connected to military, like a military mm -hmm. coup. I don't know what else, what other kind of coups there are. 
cuckoo cachoo i don't know yeah coop but, coops coop coops but uh you know with insurgencies there's been a lot of you know different pieces of pop culture that have mm. symbolized this or or shown these through yeah. means of you know creating rebellion not only in a you know a made-up universe but some are inspirations for modern day you know rebellions that have kind of been become symbols so like i right. see immediately the first one that stands up on the list here uh which you know i've seen real life groups kind of emulate and use as uh as a cover v for vendetta oh yeah yeah, yeah v for vendetta yeah came so, out in 2005 yeah yeah, I mean, it's it's been, to be honest, it's a little confusing to me. I watched it as a young kid, and like obviously, the mask is the most res recognizable, yeah. and this is what I mean by like symbols used in today, because you have like, you know, the uh, the online hacker group Anonymous right. uh, have been seen, you know, wearing these masks when they make when they make uh, announcements or you know anywhere on the web yeah. that they used it in uh, Mr. Robot too. It was kind yeah. of a version of that. It was kind of meant to kind of emulate that or be a version of that. Yeah. So V for Vendetta, you know, you have this figure, this one man that is waging war against a totalitarian state in order to kind of, you know, spread a message and wake up the populace and remind them of their freedoms or something yeah. you put there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And this it's takes a place in the UK, right? Yeah, it takes place in the UK. Um, the movie, yeah, the movie does, and it's the future. It's based on a comic book by uh, Frank Miller, I think. Frank Miller. Yeah, I'd have to look that up because uh, I didn't do any research. Because who's that? But no, it was an <laughs> early '80s graphic novel, and so the idea was like it's a fascist state controls the populist. Uh, I think in the comic book, he was more like for anarchy. Like he's like just mm. embrace anarchy. And I don't know how they Part define. The how, yeah, I don't know how you define anarchy. I've never thought of that as like anarchy is like a total breakdown of all government system systems. And I don't think that I don't I don't know about that. But um, yeah. basically in the movie, it was, yes, yeah, totalitarian. It was, you know, you know, semi quasi religious, quasi Christian kind of thing. Uh, government secrets, government cover ups, obviously propaganda, very 1984 uh, type stuff. In fact, it's funny because John Hurt was like the face of the propaganda machine, the head of the state. Um, yeah, and then V is a mysterious figure who works a guy who wears a Guy Fox mask. Guy Fox is a famous character in the UK. He tried to blow up Parliament and he failed. And so they have, uh, I think it's Guy Fox Day actually. In November, remember, remember the fifth of November, the, the treason and gunpowder plot. Yeah. So ever they build, they burn him in effigy because it's it's kind of a reminder to the people to never let their government get too big or get overthrow their government. You know, you know like they, the power is always with the people kind of thing. I, you, you UK, our UK listeners maybe can add some more nuance to that. But that's the kind of basic. It's like the people are the real power. The government should never get too big. I think even in the movie, he says government should be afraid of their people. People should never be afraid of their governments, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and so he he blows up the ba the old Bailey, which is like a, a London, you know, government building. And then a year later, he says he's going to blow up parliament. And he uh, Natalie Portman plays Evie Hammond, who is just kind of a regular citizen. She doesn't want to get involved, but then through circumstance, she ends up getting involved and then he ends up influencing her to become just like this total revolutionary. You know, he like, he like kind of like tortures her a little bit without her knowing shaves her yeah. head. And like, then, then, you know, she really kind of ends up waking up to just the fear, the fear that she had of the government of not wanting to get involved of losing her, you know, the it's, this kind of a lot of governments kind of do this thing where they, they use fear and intimidation. They, you know, the fear of losing your comfort, you're losing your job, losing your friend groups, you know, uh, and going to jail, all that kind of stuff in order to silence people. And that works for most people, right? It's kind of this herd mentality where, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's like, Oh, well, you know, I, I got it pretty good and I don't want to know if I want to say too much, you know? So, uh, but yeah, for vendetta that, that mask, that guy, Falk, ma guy, Fox mask, uh, is yeah. very iconic. It is extremely iconic, you know, and you you talk you talk a lot about this movie like you've seen it a lot of times. Like, <laughs> you know it very well. Should I be concerned? Are you going to firebomb something? <laughs> it's good, man. I mean, it's you know, it's good. And it's definitely one of those things like uh, 
we can't do an episode like this without getting at least a little political. Absolutely. Because, yeah. yeah. I've been kind of biting my tongue, you know, the past 150 episodes of this <laughs> podcast, but yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Like I, there's a lot of really good themes in this movie that are, you know, extremely relevant today, especially in our current political climate. Mm -hmm. When we have this, um, we have this, crazy separation this crazy segregation of you know the left and the right yep. and then you know then you also have the epstein flight logs and everything from the, <laughs> from the case being being released and you're like oh my god these superpowers are you know they're you know they're evil like yeah yeah and it's yeah. and you know we've seen historically in the past you know couple of years how much power and influence the people actually have if they choose to do something about it it just depends on the right reasons or you know um so i mean during covid when we had the blm riots like you saw how fast things changed yeah um just because when you know when talking doesn't work i feel like you know violence is the answer <laughs> <laughs> is the answer if you want to change something and nothing's getting done but it's like okay well what's the reason for it is it a good enough reason mm -hmm. to to make things happen but yeah no there's a i'm a i'm a i'm a big believer in small government you know keep the fuck out of my business in a polite way sure. to say um so yeah no I, v for vendetta is kind of like a yearly watch I definitely think people should watch it more often because, you know, we do have the power. The common man is not so common, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's always been kind of the, uh, it, it, you know, the eternal struggle between like the populace and the rulers and how we define that relationship, you know, because it's really, for most of human history, uh, from what I know, it's really been like, the idea of the leaders has been like either like they were chosen by God or the gods, like they were gods. It was like this divine kind of thing. Um, and it was like lineages, you know, like birthright lineage, you know, like how they deserve to rule because they were born in a certain family or mm -hmm. like they've been ruling for thousands of years. So let's keep it going kind of thing. It's only kind of more in the mo quote unquote modern era that government started to revolution started to happen to be like, no, the power actually is derived from the people. OK, what does that mean? And yeah. then now you and I live in in the United States where our Constitution is based on the power being of the people by the people and for the people, you know? Yeah. So, okay, what does that mean? And are we still in that era and how far away from that have we gotten since, uh, yeah. <laughs> since we began it? So exactly. Uh, that's like why blocking, think, <laughs> like blocking uh, elections, like not allowing people to run. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ooh, I, what does that mean? Is that really constitutional? You know? Yeah. And so, I mean, you would, first of all, you know, I'm, I'm not left. I'm not right. If everybody's trying to figure out what Cameron is, I am what I consider a common sense man. So, <laughs> you know, there's some things on the left I agree with and a lot of things that I disagree with. Same thing on the right. So, yeah, V for Vendetta, all that to say, totally. I'm glad we talked about this one first because I think it's it's the one that I think maybe we can talk about some other ones. The other ones take like large, broad ideas about the, the you know, the, the government versus the totalitarian government versus the little people and them rising up. I think that theme is in most of what we're going to talk about today. V for Vendetta, I think because it was taken from the modern era, I think it's a little more relevant, uh, even though I'm sure I'm, I, I'm, I mean, you guys can quiz me on this, but I guarantee you, Frank Miller, those kinds of people, old school lefties, old school, like Democrat kind of, you know, afraid. I guarantee you this was written about Reagan. I guarantee you this was written about, you know, Republicans and stuff like that. Because there's just lot, not a lot of creative people in the entertainment industry that are right leaning. So I'm thinking yeah. it was the Cold War. They were afraid it's that nothing, Reagan man. Was press the button, and they're like, he's too, he's always too powerful, you know. But the idea of totalitarian, a fascist state, that can happen on either side, man. It's any oh, group absolutely. That wants to try to take over uh, and and suppress dissent, suppress dissenting voices, you know, not allow freedom of speech like you talked about, not allow freedom of movement and then freedom to like to like bear arms, which I'm totally in agreement, man. Those are the two fundamental freedoms upon which any successful society should be based, you know? Yeah. Uh, no, because absolutely. once you take those things away, man, people are just they can you can be controlled by the government because only the government's going to have guns and only the government's going to have speech, you know? Yeah. Oh, dude, total. And that's 1984. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like that's step number one to uh, 
to a complete communistic to totalitarianism uh, society. But absolutely, that's why they're listed. That's why they're number one and two, man. First ones yeah. to get red. Yep. Uh, something, I mean, also like, ah, it's so weird looking at, you know, I'm not, I didn't take political science or anything, but I, but I do enjoy my history and like seeing the parties switch how they how they started and where they are at today mm. like it was so interesting that like you know during the civil war like all the blue states were the red states today and all the red states were the blue states and like mm. you look at like you know abraham lincoln was a republican uh he represented the Re republican party and you know looking looking into it the kkk what everybody hates so damn much they were Democrats. <laughs> like, dude, it's like, man, like the evolution of the political parties are, if you look into the history, like they mm. are not what they are today. Like you would, mm. like everybody's so, you know, focused on the activity, but not who did it. Um, right. But anyway, right. too no, political I mean, for me. It's, I mean, it's, it, you got to know your history, man. All yeah. of your history, because, and yeah. all of it. I'll admit, you know, I've only I've only looked at certain aspects of history before, but you got to look at all of it and it's hard to do. And it takes a lot of time. And most people don't do it because of that fact. You know, exactly. It's like you're like, what? Oh, choose. Yeah. We cherry pick. And they're like, well, that's yeah, yeah. creeps. Like, no, there's a lot more to it. than that. Sure. You have to understand all history. The good and the bad needs to be taught. It doesn't it doesn't matter because history always repeats itself if it's not known. And if you know where things are heading, we can kind of interdict and uh send it a different way but mm -hmm. yeah v for vendetta i think was an excellent choice to start this off but let's talk about something that was hot garbage really quick oh man um, Boy, just real quick for this? just real no, quick i, I mean know, we, we could have a whole episode just we on could this, and i think let's just i i mean it's relevant so i think it needs to be talked about yeah but folks you know rebel moon was such it was waited on. I know I waited on it when I, oh, heard I waited it. I on like, it. I was so excited. I haven't been this excited for a movie in a long time, man, because the trailer got me, man. It, like it got to me. It lifted me up. Zack Snyder's always had a great visual style. I'm like, what is this new world? What is this universe? You know, is it going to be this great kind of new sci-fi universe that we can build off of? Yeah. Oh, what a disappointment. <laughs> oh, my god i'm actually super excited to talk about uh to talk about it with you yeah I, all i've heard you say is it's garbaggio and yeah. i think we've both been on the same page uh since we heard about its release i'm like oh dude this could be really cool just like you said a whole brand new universe that's yep. super awesome like you know we had dune which is and then we, we've all in the past we've had you know guardians of the galaxy you know the whole mcu we're like we're about to get an entire franchise that you know the people deserve and it sounded cool just based off the sci-fi like wild west type of theme and whatnot mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. what the fuck was this movie about <laughs> what was happening the entire time it was literally to me first of all no, no the the writing was terrible it was like we're here now we're left and then we're going down and we're gonna 360 and then we're gonna do a backflip and uh, nobody's <laughs> gonna know what's going on ever <laughs> and uh yeah i i mean that's what i got but also i ate an edible while i watched it and it was, did not that might have that might have influenced your perception of the movie yeah. well listen cameron you you probably did the right thing by having the edible because at least your body was going through a fun journey and the chemicals in your oh, body no. were, were oh no but it oh no it, it turned it worse off. oh it, no because it gave me anxiety Oh, I was like, am I? I was like, am I stupid? Am I just this stupid no, to man. where I'm not understanding because no. I did this to myself? No. Why? Why? <laughs> like, no, it, yeah, it gave me anxiety. I turned it off and put on Scooby Doo instead because I was like, happy times, happy times, happy. But, um, uh, Rebel Moon, uh, it's it's the worst. It's it, it, okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to find an entry point. Let me tell you this. Let me just say this. I, I started hearing that reviews were bad for it before it came out. I was like, oh, no, it's getting really panned. And I, I am someone who, whether I like it or not, will be influenced by someone's critique of a movie before I see it. Like, I'll have that their, their thoughts in my oh, head. Really? Yeah. So I said we were actually going to we were gonna do like a movie night with some friends coming up. We were going to watch Rebel Moon and we were all waiting for it. And then the reviews came out. I said, listen, I need to go and watch it by myself and just have my own untainted experience. And so that's what I did. I sat on the couch. I watched it. Uh, I watched it with the wife, but she doesn't care about movies, so she wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
but, and I watched it and I get that feeling. There's this feeling I get about 15, 20, 20 minutes into a movie where I can tell I'm not feeling it. I'm not with it. And then I'm like, oh man. And I, I can't really understand why I have to process a little bit after the movie, but it's like, oh, it's either got me in the first 20, 20, 15 minutes or it doesn't. And this movie didn't have me. And I'm like, what is so familiar about this movie? Why, why does this seem like really kind of like cookie cutter? You know, because it starts out great. It's got that monologue by Anthony Hopkins. It sets up the universe, you know. Yeah, the ship comes out of the space cool. vagina, you yeah. know, in the beginning. <laughs> uh, like, really odd. Like, make it a little more square or something. But, um, you know, he's like, oh, there's a... And it's like this, okay, the emperor, and then he was assassinated by, you know, and now there's the, the, the foreign king. And, yeah, yeah, now the struggle. And the new leader, he sends out, he sends out, because there's rebellion, right? Rebellion. Yeah, rebel. To crush the, the rebellion. Crush, the, crush yeah. anyone who calls themselves rebel. Well, then they go to this planet, and it's like, all of a sudden, it's seven samurai. You yeah, know, it's, it's like farmers and shit, seven. you know? Yeah. yeah, it's the exact same storyline as Magnificent Seven or the Seven Samurai, where there's a village, the bad guys come, they take what they got and they say, we're going to come back for some reason. We're going to come back in 10 weeks and take your harvest. Right. So you, and so they have that time to go and find a couple of people, I guess, in the universe, that are going to help them to yeah. fight. But it's, so it's not even like there's a rebellion going on, but they're not even part of the rebellion officially. Like they're just trying to defend their village when they got, like the space, they have a huge spaceship up in the planet. They could just like zap them all from orbit. But for some reason, they're going to settle for a ground attack with this village. Apparently, they're guessing that that's going to be the case. Yeah. Um. And no, you know, they're lazy. They're yeah, super lazy. Yeah. Uh. And uh. And then it's just a derivative. Every scene is a derivative of like other movies. Yeah. That's it's just a collection of scenes. And I get that Zack Snyder. If you think about his career, I was thinking about this the other day. What has he ever done in his career? <laughs> He has done either remakes. He have done remakes of comic books, remakes of other movies. You got Dawn of the Dead. You got uh, uh, the uh, the Watchmen. Justice League, you got yeah, 300. Justice you got Justice League. And then Zack Snyder, what does he do? He does Sucker Punch, which apparently there's some messaging in that movie, like some pro-women messaging, if you can look for it. But it's just like, it's like That's a, based a, off a, it's graphic, like a 14-year-old like threw up every video game yeah. and comic book they ever read out onto the screen i'm not saying it doesn't look great you know and it doesn't have some messaging but that's Zack snyder so he probably took all these ideas like i love this movie i love this movie i, I obviously love seven samurai or oh, it's the original Pizza. idea look at that it's not an original idea nothing in that movie is original. Sucker, no i'm telling you sucker oh, punch. sucker punch yes that was the yeah, that i thought was that was his. a graphic novel but yeah that was his creation yeah and fair fair play to him but that's who he is he's obviously a very great visual guy like that's his thing he's his visuals you know um, but this movie, he's not, a, I don't think he's a good writer. I don't think he does dialogue very well. And the logic of what he does doesn't like, it doesn't add up. And it's, and it's, uh, I don't know. It's just the worst kind of like expositional writing. And then the character work wasn't all that great. And these, the characters that they had, they looked interesting, but nobody had a chance to like do anything. The whole movie, they're just, once they get the person into the team, they have the little scene where they get them into the team they just like hang out in the background after that you know yeah that's it and it's and it's really just about uh sophia batella she's the main character who cannot happens to be a rebel she, yeah know? well yeah you know, she used to she used to work for the empire and then she ran away but then all of a sudden she's helping out because you know like because whatever because you know obviously that the, the mean evil occupying soldiers tried to rape the innocent the innocent viking girl yeah. uh and she she showed up and that was awesome obviously uh yeah but uh, it's just a lot of slow motion, which Zack Snyder's about. It's uh, it's um, a lot of derivative ideas, you know. And I, I, I get like if I, I don't know. It's like a movie that I would have made, and I'm not a filmmaker because <laughs> I like stuff, but I don't, I don't come up with original ideas. I just here I am talking about other people's ideas. You yeah, know? Um, damn, dude. I would have said I like this scene from this movie. I like this scene from this movie. I like this idea, and he just smashed them all together. And what came out was just something that was. It's one of those, it's the the critique I give was it's worse because I wanted it to be better. It's not like I didn't have any expectations and then it was what it was. It's like, oh, you did. please, please let this be this great new start to like a new sci-fi era. 
and it just wasn't. And for that yeah. reason, I give it an even lower score in my mind because yeah, in my they heart, built it up. Yeah, they, they built, they up, built up hope. Thing. They made yeah. you a believer. They made not to mention they made you wait like a year. It was <laughs> over a year of waiting and like yeah. listen, like just hoping that this would be something. Like I think we've been looking forward to this for months. If yeah. not, if not like over a year and, and then, it's not even done. Like I don't even not, know no, they what more. they're going to do in part two Yeah, because basically all they have to do now, I think they've gotten everybody right. They take them down. They got the crew. Now it's just the fight at the end uh, around the, uh, I guarantee you it's not going to be strategic. Like there's going to be so many strategic like faults in this thing. Cause they, you can see the layout of the village, right? It's on a hillside. It's got open fields to one area and I guarantee you the bad guys are going to choose one way to funnel into the camp, even though they have multiple areas ways to approach it. They've got flying yeah. ships. They've got Oh my god, troops. yeah, they could they could do they could so just carpet, much. you know, like they yeah, don't but have to. They, but they don't want to ruin the harvest. They I mean, want they could drop there. one bomb on the village itself. The bomb the, the village and the don't farm they have land robots. Is they have like robots at their disposal that they can like not lose anybody. You know? I mean, they could, but I guess all the robots are Anthony Hopkins and all the robots are pacifists or something. Yeah. Unless, un unless oh, they yeah, decide not to be, unless they you decide know? not to be. And yeah. then he puts antlers on his head for some reason. Like, I'm sure we're going to find that out. Like maybe it'll jump back to the village and we'll see what they missed while they were gone. And there'll be this like relationship with the robot and the other lady. I'm just guessing. Right. I'm just, yeah. Cause I'm like, point, that's all we can do. Yeah, that's all you can get. You know, we'll find out in, when in a couple months, when part two comes out, he even has a, a rated R version of the first part that's going to be an hour longer. And I got to know. I got to know, like, what else are you going to put into Why? this? Dude, I couldn't even get through the, P the, I couldn't get through the PG-13 version. Why the fuck would I want to waste another hour? I don't know, man. And like, know. what's, oh, I'm sorry. Like, we're going to see one nipple. Like that's going to be the <laughs> change. That's going to be the difference of the rating. We're going to see know, that a little spider bit more. lady. The spider yeah. is. I, they CGI'd out her nipples of the spider lady. They're going to put them back in. That'll be the way to <laughs> Yeah, and you're going to say one more curse word? Like, that's it. Yep. Um, dude, yeah, I could not get through that movie. I, I don't know how it ends. I got to the spider lady and then the one who fights her, right? Yeah, um, the, the lightsaber lady. Yeah, lightsaber. And after that, there was also, there was like another, there was like a guy, right? Uh, that they got, they went after. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, uh, um, uh, uh, the black guy, uh, he has, oh, yeah, I his the, name. He's, in, he's been in a bunch of stuff. Amistad, Guardians of the Galaxy, but yeah, he's a general a, that yeah, general Titus. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I think I fell off after the, the spider lady. And then I yeah. was like, dude, this is, I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just turned it off, but yeah, rebel moon, huge disappointment. <laughs> Talk about, you know, a pretty sad insurgency, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Let's uh, let's cleanse our palates because we got to put this one in here. If we're talking about uh, action, uh, you know, action, military themed, uh, all sorts of like classic iconic images, what Rebel Moon was a derivative of and apparently Zack Snyder's original story for was his version of a Star Wars movie. So Star oh. Wars is the well, classic yeah, Empire versus the Rebellion. So the whole franchise. Yeah. You know, whether you want to call it the Empire versus the Rebels or you want to call it the New Order versus what is it? The the uh, the, the what, not the Rebellion. It was the, the oh, man, yeah. in, the, in the new version, the, the newer movies. Yeah, right? the new movies. It's basically the same dynamic. It's uh, the uh, the re not the Rebellion. It's the it's the resistance the resistance the, the resistance re yeah is the, resistance. the new yeah the resistance wow so uh yeah because it's because who cares because it's yeah <laughs> yeah like, who cares uh, Just, yeah. who cares about it but yeah. no yeah the entire star wars franchise if you like put the jedi themes aside it is 100 percent an insurgency right yeah um yeah no, i mean you have the rebels intergalactic, intergalactic insurgency yeah, yeah. man could you I wonder, you know, because obviously not t taking a – what am I saying right here? What are you saying? <laughs> what am I saying? Um, you know, taking a quick side quest from uh, Star Wars, but like, you know, insurgencies, you know, when they start, it, it has to take an extremely influential person or like idea to be able to start, right? Because mm. like – 
And thinking about the global war on terrorism, like you have, we were fighting Al Qaeda, which you know was a type of insurgency and yeah. uprising for religious Islamic terrorism. Yeah, Islamic terrorism. Being, so like, you, know. you obviously need to have such an influential message that, and I mean, if it's religious backed, um, like that, that's obviously a big factor. Like if you have believers that you know are ready to put their life on the line for what they believe, that's that's believable. But when you think about like these movies about insurgencies about political ideas. Um, you know, especially comparing it today, like we have everybody, you go on Instagram and everybody's complaining about how things need to change and, you know, mm. how we are literally losing our rights and nobody like that's the extent of it. Right. I feel like the worst thing that goes on nowadays is just people yelling at their phones and then putting it away and then paying their taxes. That's yeah. that's literally what I see. So like to take an idea that you believe is worth dying over um and and influencing others to join you in your cause like that to me uh is a mind-boggling idea mm. um, you know what's interesting about that man is uh if we're talking if we're talking about star wars specifically because i totally agree with what you're saying like you have to have a unifying idea yeah you know it has to be something that everybody can get behind and people have to be prepared to lose yeah. Yeah. And it has to be motivating. You've got to have leaders at the top kind of spurring people on. But Star Wars, uh, it's it's based. I feel like Star Wars, the originals at, at, at any rate, it was and maybe the new ones, too. But I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out the dynamic beyond just it's a totalitarian government. Right. Uh, that uh, is ruled by the emperor. Right. He dissolves the Senate. That happens in the beginning of episode four. Yeah. But. Uh, and then you have a rebellion and, and I, I guess I'd have to kind of like think my way through all of the different movies and stuff because it was a representative democracy, but right. There was a Republic. Yeah, there's a Senate. They had there public Senate, representatives, right? Right? the planets. Yeah. And then, but they started getting, it was, became, uh, in ineffective, right. And people became discontent. And then there was corruption deep within it, right. The yeah. Emperor Palpatine the whole time. Yeah. He was the one pulling the strings behind the back and making plans. Uh, underneath everybody's nose and just going up to the end of like episode six, the return of the Jedi, it was basically, so I guess the rebellion in star Wars was, it was fighting for the more Republic Republican for bat lack of a better term, yeah. a Republican view of the government rather than a totalitarian or imperial or empire type view, yeah. you know, uh, expansionist kind of empire type thing. Uh, so that would be kind of, that's the basic, you know, that freedom, right? Hope, a new hope, right? In episode four uh, is is kind of the motivating factor behind a lot of the rebels, you know, like, so they're factions of the old government in the beginning of the move in the, in the middle of the movies, right? Because we start off with the Republic and then that all get, there's a, then there's the Clone Wars and then that establishes the Emperor. And then, so basically he starts consolidating power and by episode four, we've got, uh, you know, we have remnants uh, of the old Republic fighting against the empire. So that's kind of like the dynamic there. So the, the unifying force, why they, where they get all their in, you know, information, tactics, uh, equipment, people from is remnants of the old Republic, basically. Yeah. Um, or yeah, the, the Republic that has now been kind of disestablished and, or kind of gets in a little bit more into the guts of how the Republic really started building itself. Cause it's, because right after, you know, obviously right after the, in episode three, Emperor, to Emperor totally consolidates power. He destroys the Jedi temple. He's just, he, everybody gets scattered, right? They're totally disarray. And then they consolidate power. And then not long after that, in terms of like, I guess Andor would be just a few years before episode four. So in the interim, Emperor is consolidating power. It's very much like, you know, it's, it seems like an Andor. It's like very 1940s Germany type mm. style. You know, where you got the secret police going and finding or any kind of communist era where they've got the government police going after and yeah, police getting and after like free thinkers or people that yeah, are rebellious, yeah. you know, uh, so or who they believe to be rebellious or yeah, yeah, anybody, the, yeah. yeah, anybody that's not towing the party line. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, just kind of the long thought process of kind of going off what you said, you do have to have a unifying idea. And usually in a lot of these movies and all other pop culture, there is usually a unifying idea. And I usually, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, leave a comment, comment section or something. Um, 
it's basically about freedom, right? Yeah. It's the freedom to live your life outside of the confines of this totalitarian government that only wants power to come from one place, that only wants people to talk about certain things, that only wants – governments tend to – they're like animals, right? They, or they're like blobs. They, if the more they consume, the bigger they get, it's like a big company or whatever. They, they exist to consolidate and advance their own power. That's all yeah. they really exist to do. Everything functions for the sake of the party. Right. Yeah. I think communist China is like a great example. It's like, they may be cap. They may have like capitalistic tendencies, but yeah. everything is designed to uphold and uplift and advance the party. The yeah. No, I mean, party. people, I feel like people differentiate or they, they combine governments and say like, you know, between the market, like the economy and the, how the government runs. I think a lot of people believe that they are one. So like, mm. like for China, for example, they have a capitalistic economy, right? So they have, they very, they follow very capitalistic, uh, marketplace rules. But when you look at the government, that's communism. So people are just like, oh, China, you know, they're capitalistic. And it's like, no, their market's capitalistic. How they make money is capitalistic, but how they how they establish rules and regulations is communistic. Like, yeah, and I and honestly, man, I don't think that they're even all that cap capitalistic when it comes to even the functioning of their businesses. Like I've heard mm -hmm. people, I know friends. Well, there's a lot of big government rule over. Yeah, yeah. And you have to have certain rules in your company that yeah. are in alignment with the Communist Party. And so I had a buddy of mine who uh, he had a business in China. He's not a Chinese national. He tried to leave the country. Banks just kept his money. Yeah, he, can't, he still can't get it out. You know, it's just like, yeah, you don't do what we want. You just don't get your money, and you have yeah. no recourse <laughs> yeah. because the the government is too powerful. Yeah. And it's who are you going to complain to about the banks not giving the money? The government? They're going to be like, nah, sucks to suck, dude. Yeah, yeah, because we are in with the banks. Yeah. Know? So no, that's, it's, it's a crazy, it's a crazy uh, thing, but no, Star Wars is a, I think it's a really good representation of like, you know, plus we have to, the whole thing is like villainizing. We have to villainize the government, which sure. I mean, for me is an easy thing to do. It's like, <laughs> it's an extremely easy thing. To yeah, do, yeah, sure. You know, especially even if you're super um, uneducated, even if you're, you know, do you know what a common person to blame for Everything that's wrong in this country is the government. That, sure. yeah, I mean, that's something you don't have to be like a freaking genius to see. Um, it's just like, okay, well, you know, it's cold outside, fucking government turning <laughs> on the weather machines, you know? Did you hear about that conspiracy, the weather machine? <laughs> oh, oh for some water. reason, who was I talking to? Oh, he had a, I forgot who I was talking to, but he's like, yeah, I had a buddy. We were talking about conspiracies, and I'm like, oh, you know, there's some really good conspiracies about like, you know, chemtrails for one, like the the trails you see in the sky behind airplanes. Oh, they're actually dumping toxic chemicals into the air that makes us all stupid. So we're more easily manipulated. Um, so uh, one conspiracy was that I heard that I never heard before, which I thought was absolutely hilarious, was that Obama when they. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot, Obama. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Obama. When Obama was in office, the White House actually had a weather machine that he controlled. So, <laughs> so basically, like there was, uh, there was a lot of rain in California during Obama's office, and then, or it was vice versa. I forgot. And he was a big pro-Trump supporter. So it was like when Trump got in the office. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. So basically, in California. It was raining, but everybody everywhere else, it wasn't. So, like, the weather was really shit. But then when Trump went in office, the weather got much better. So all the Republicans believed, see, Trump turned off the weather machine. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, so man. It's, it's, you know, we got to villainize. It's, 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 so it's influencing people to share your ideology through the means of, you know, providing a common goal worth sacrificing your ideals and your life for or at least not ideals but sacrificing your comforts for mm -hmm. um and your relationships and something worth sacrificing for and then on the flip side villainizing uh you know uh, position uh political powers in order to you know continue your continue your goal so there, yeah. there's a lot of things and i'm sure like when you go through special forces training i don't know if you remember or I don't even think it's right to talk about like how you, I mean, there's things obviously like how to deconstruct governments that we've seen come out of like, you know, uh, 
I've, there's one interview about a former KGB operative that uh, came out and basically like said, yeah, like to destabilize like entire and motivate like other generations in order to, um, you know, uh, achieve a goal, like a political goal, like the destabilization of a society um, is like a very long process. You can't just go in and change things immediately. Like yeah. it's, we're talking generations down the line in order to influence a change in how you want the future to be. Um, but there was an interview with a KGB operative that came out and like moved to America and kind of, started saying that like, yeah, like Russia has been doing this for a long, long, long time. And we started back in the eighties, you know, and now we're here today for almost 40 years later. And it's like, we're seeing a lot going on, a lot of drastic changes. Um, so like these, these insurgencies, they're not just Yuri Bezmenev, Yuri Bezmenev. Look up everybody. Look, Yuri Alexandrovich Bezmenev, uh, claimed in 1984, that uh, Russia has a long-term goal of ideological subversion, subverting in the United States. He describes the process as great, a great brainwashing that has four basic stages. The first stage, he said, is called demoralization, which would take about 20 years. It's, it's one of those things where if you go and you watch, I've watched some of this. If you go and you um, watch this and then you kind of track major trends in American society, you're, you're thinking like, oh, no. Oh no! You're oh, like this guy's not crazy. <laughs> this like, guy ain't crazy. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, demoralization. Uh, I'm trying to. Th I'm trying to look up like what exactly he said, but uh, yeah, look up Yuri Bezmenev. It's he's kind of one of those. Uh, if you if you don't like what's happening in the government at any given time, uh, then he's one to be like, oh dang, like, um, yeah, let him cook. Yeah, yeah. was was Yuri right? You know, it's yeah. like oh geez. Uh, and if you want, by the way, Cameron, I, I, I was thinking about like how much I could talk about in terms of my training. A lot of the doctrine, I think, I think that I was exposed to between 2005 and 2009, I think is public knowledge now. I think okay. it's be spoken about pretty openly. I just did a quick Google search for special forces doctrine, counterinsurgency. And there's a couple of things that pop up that I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, uh, you know, there's a joint chiefs of staff documentary, je uh, document, J joint publication 3-24. It okay. was valid up until 2021. I'm not sure if that's exactly what we went on of, but uh, no, I mean, it's, it's definitely, I can say generally like that in Iraq specifically, we were, it was counterinsurgency that we were worried yeah. about because Counter. the, it sometimes we're insurgency, you know, sometimes like I think in Vietnam, if I recall my history correctly, we were trying to do insurgency with the locals like the Montagnards against the North, the, yeah, the Vietnamese MBA. government, right? Yeah. That's so trying to overthrow that harassment raids. Yeah. yeah. Um, building relations with the local tribes and that kind of stuff. And now then in Iraq, it was counterinsurgency because we were trying to legitimize the current government. We were trying to build them up and, you know, the elections and all that kind of stuff. And then, so the insurgency was, you know, agents from Iran, Syria, Iraq, I, you know, all the surrounding areas, uh, coming in, and feeding men, weapons, and equipment to try to destabilize the government. That, or, you know, at least, I don't know, at least kill Americans and coalition forces. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah dude, I, I mean, that's very interesting to know because, like, for me, we played, as, you know, our respective units, we play very different roles. Like, mm -hmm. I know in Ranger Regiment, like, we weren't concerned with uh, influencing local populace. Like, obviously, they're a big uh, contributor because they would ultimately, you know, assist you in getting who we needed to especially when you go into bit tq which is battlefield interrogation and questioning like you want them to be on your side in order to feed you feed you uh um, knowledge and feed you kind of tips that would help us bag someone at a higher level um so obviously like the best way to do that is to be really like is to get the locals on your side but as far as just like constructing a insurgency to fight alongside that was special forces job. Like we yeah. didn't do anything with that. Like we direct action raid airfield seizure. That is our big things. We don't, we don't go behind enemy lines and freaking you know, try to influence the populace in order to fight. Well, good man. Uh, for me, just really quick, we didn't mention any video games, but, uh, there's literally a video game insurgency, the insurgency game series insurgency. <laughs> named insurgency. And I thought it was yeah. worth mentioning just because I think we when we first met each other gameology insurgency sandstorm was our first episode we ever recorded uh, yeah yeah that's so, true man that's cool that's yeah so that's a little fun little fun memory it's but like four folks, years ago almost four years ago now 
almost four years. Crazy, dude. Time flies. But uh, let's do that's that's going to do it for uh, this discussion. Um, like as he said, we're probably going to have to do a part two because we didn't even scratch over half of the ones we had uh, written down here. But we have a fan question, and this fan question comes to us from Dylan Grimm via email. And Dylan wants to know if you could swap places with any character other than the main character in your favorite movie, who would you swap with? Oh, man. Okay, so a major, a character from a movie, but not the main character. Not the main character, and you have to swap with them. Hmm. It's a good one. It's a good question. Ooh. I mean, I guess it depends on who you call a main character, because if it was like Star Wars, you know, I'd want to be, I mean, I'd want to be somebody that lived, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like, I'd love to be like, I guess Han Solo is considered a main character. Uh, yeah, I would say but, so. Uh, yeah, I'd want to be like a Jedi, you know, to be a Jedi in the days of like the High Republic, you know, so, uh, you know, but they all they all freaking die, man. Most of them. do. Yeah, I'd love well, to be. Uh, it's not a movie, but uh, what's his name? Cal Kestis from the Jedi series, the video game series. Uh, yeah. Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor. He's a pretty yeah. cool dude, but he's a, he's the main character. So. I don't know. Hey, that's tough. What do you do? You know who you would pick? I'm having a hard time, man. Ugh. I mean, AMG, but he's. A, I guess he's a main character too. Yeah, no, he is. Oh, that's a great question. Uh, honestly, I would love to like probably switch places with not a main character, but uh, somebody in the John Wick universe that like isn't John Wick, but is still part of the Assassin Syndicate. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, like the the guy with the dog. Like he's nobody not is would you consider yeah nobody would you consider him a main character or like a supporting actor? I guess you could I guess he he makes the cut for supporting because it's it's he's not in it all, all the time. He has some parts to play, but yeah. uh he's not the main dude, you know. I yeah. think he's more so supporting like, cast. Yeah, so for me it would be like nobody. I'd like switch place with nobody because obviously I will I'd love to just like mess around in that universe and see what it's all about. Um yeah. 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 So that would be I, like, I mean I I definitely would want to. Uh, I'm trying to think of like fun franchises that I've enjoyed. Fun that <laughs> that, that like aren't uh, you know uh, that aren't the main characters. Like all the main characters are cool, you know. Um, maybe <laughs> maybe I can fudge it a little bit because maybe I can say I want to be from the Mandalorian, but I'll be <laughs> Luke Skywalker's role in the Mandalorian because <laughs> he's only in it for one episode. Yeah, but he's then everybody the would character. hate you. In that yeah, but then I'd, yeah, I'd never visit you on your island because I'm like, that dude's just an that dude's just a grouchy old man that's not no, contributing no, anymore. Skywalker's still cool. He hasn't become embittered by life and written by, by Ryan Oh, yeah, he's Johnson. still young. He's still young yeah. and doing, you know, I, somehow I being a Jedi master with minimal training. He's still good, yep. yeah. Yep. So, so he hasn't okay, failed. Yeah, he's that, not a bitter old white man yet. Yeah, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Just mad at the world for, you know crazy for tiger woods um so all right we all are, right we, we got, got a game, game to play we got a game i'm the game it. master yeah but i got all it here right. for before we do it folks i just want to say if you're liking what you're hearing folks we got a bunch of great content for you on youtube we got first formation uh weekly uh weekly uh bits of pop culture that i'm excited for things that i'll talk about on monday and then uh, every Friday, you got the debrief where Cameron is rolling out some fun tidbits of military news. So that's on the YouTube channel. Come and join our Patreon, folks. Uh, we get extended episodes of everything, uh, uh, extra episodes on the second tier, and then live streams every month. Uh, and uh, yeah, we got a merch merch store, all sorts of good stuff for your perusal. And folks, if you want to hang out with me a little bit more, shameless promotion for my horror gaming channel, The Is Files with uh, some more channels on the way and in the works and the behind the scenes. So uh, that being said, let's do our game. This All game right, is called, are you ready, Cameron? This game is called Rebel I with a ready. Cause. I hope you're ready. Rebel with a Cause, because what good rebellion, what good is a rebellion if there's not a reason for it? I'm going to give you the name of a real or fictional rebel group, and you tell okay. me where it happened, meaning where on earth or in what fictional location this occurred. Bonus points if you can tell me why they were fighting. So this is you just tell me. I'm going to give you the group. You're saying, oh, this mm -hmm. is in this. And then if you want a bonus point, you say this is why they were building. So oh, the man. warm up. This might be super hard. Like this could be really hard. It could be, man. It could be. I, I think you, I'm looking at it. I think you might be all right. 
depending on okay. the uh, which franchises you're familiar with. But the warm up should give you an idea. The warm up is the Rebel Alliance. The Rebel Alliance is absolutely where, Star Wars. Where Wars in? Where, where just in where? The Star where did Wars? it? Well, oh. where did it take place? You mean like actual geographical location? No, oh, no, 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 no. You, I think you were on your way. You were about to say it. I kind of messed you up. Oh, like where? Like what movie? What franchise? But like that? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Star Wars universe. I don't know what planet. I want to see all That's over it. the galaxy. All no, over yeah, the absolutely. Galaxy. The, yeah. Chris, literally, and the the word. The, okay. It is the Star Wars universe is the answer. I see. Okay, so Star Wars universe. The rebels were fighting against the Empire, right? Yep. Because. They are totalitarian and they want, like we discussed, they want everybody to think, act, and speak the way they want to, and they want to be free and they don't want to deal with that. So, okay, I get, I understand the premise of the game. There you go. You got it. It's 150% correct, man. Okay. This is the first official one The Stranded Insurgency. The Stranded Insurgency? Oh my God. Okay. The Stranded Insurgency. I told you this is going to be a hard game, man. I have no idea. The <laughs> Stranded Insurgency. Huh. This is just my bad because I never pay attention to the any details. I've probably like seen the movie. names of things. Yeah, well, official names I'll, I'll of things. I'm just like, this is it's not a movie, but it is a franchise that you are familiar with. The Stranded Insurgency, huh? And I am familiar with it, huh? Mm -hmm. What is it from like that? Because like, I don't know. Oh, uh, is it from like the Halo universe? Because like they have an insurgency, but they have like rebels, uh, which I was surprised to find out. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to say Halo because I have no idea. Shot in the dark. Ooh, not quite. You were good. You were in the right, the right uh, pop culture area, but it's from Gears of War. Really? It's a guerrilla okay. war waged by various stranded organizations against the remnants of the coalition of ordered governments in the lesser islands chain. Gotcha. The cog. Yeah. Okay. So they're fighting the. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's been a while since I played Gears. So, and you have like in the game, you have minimal exposure to like the people. You usually fighting the locusts the entire time. Um, yeah. But that makes sense, man. I'm a good loser, though. So let's keep going. Let's see how this hey, game is going to absolutely game. decimate my confidence. Let's step into the real world for this one. Number two, the Whiskey Rebellion. The Whiskey Rebellion. Um, Where and why? Where and why the Whiskey Rebellion? I'm just going to go ahead and just go off the name and say this happened during the 1930s when in the United States uh, during the prohibition of alcohol. So we had, you know, an uprising opening speakeasy still running alcohol. This is where NASCAR was invented because people started souping up their vehicles in order to uh, run from the law when they're transporting moonshine and whiskey. So I'm going to go ahead and say it happened in the United States because of prohibition. Uh, you are correct, but in the wrong way. So I'm going to okay. give you the points. It did take place in the United States. You just didn't get the bonus point for why. why? The uh, Whiskey Rebellion uh, was also was a violent tax protest in the United States beginning in 1791 and ending in 1794 during the presidency of George Washington. The so-called whiskey tax was the first tax imposed on a domestic product by the newly formed federal government. Uh, and so there was a bit of a rebellion when it, when it, when that occurred. So this is actually the beginning of the United States during George Washington's uh, tenure. Oh, basically. interesting. Okay. So that's really funny though, because you know, you have George Washington is fighting the Redcoats, uh, and they're like, no, we don't want to pay your fucking taxes. And then, you know, we have this entire revolution and then we're like, okay, well, we're going to tax whiskey now. And America's like, we just fought a war over this. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah, we like very... our, we like our rebellions, you know, Dude, how ironic, but okay, cool. That's okay. Cool. You got it, man. So let's go to number three. This is back into the fictional land. The brotherhood without banners. Brotherhood without banners. Oh man. Brotherhood. Without banners, no women allowed. Um, <laughs> it's only brothers allowed. <laughs> brotherhood without banners and fictional. The Brotherhood without banners. Man, there are so many choices. <laughs> to, I have no idea, man. The Brotherhood without banners. Um, 
without banners I'm, I'm assuming it has to be like super secret but again what type of insurgency is like loud and proud i mean i guess like al-qaeda was because <laughs> and isis they had flags <laughs> um i have no idea i'm just gonna say like the last of us or something uh thinking about that government and their uh their brotherhood i'm gonna go with the last of us Oh, not quite. The Brotherhood Without Banners is from, that's right, you are yelling at your radio right now, the Game of Thrones franchise. Oh, really? Yeah, it was an outlaw band that was uh, sent out to work against the Lann Lannister interests in the, in the Riverlands during the time of the War of the Five Kings. So this is in the beginning of the books. They're sent out officially by, uh, in the show at least, or I think in the books, but by Ned Star or Eddard Stark. He's like, go out. As the hand, he's like, go out and stop the Lannisters from marauding. And then once that regime changes to the Lannisters, they become outlaws because they got a new king and a new queen. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So they, they're fun. kind of we're having a good people. time. We're learning. Men of the people. We're learning a lot, man. Yeah. We are learning. Uh, I but, love how you're like, people are absolutely hate you right now because you're like not getting any of these. But that's okay. <laughs> Here we go. Let's keep it going. That's all right. We got two left. This is the next one still in fictional land, fictional world. The Order of the Phoenix. The Order of the Phoenix. Yes. Um, yeah, okay. That's going to be from Harry Potter. Um, right? Order. That's literally, yeah, Order of the Phoenix. From Harry Potter, it's like all the, the instructors in order to fight against Voldemort. So, yeah, it's at, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 yeah. No, that's 100% right, yeah. And I was doubting myself for a second. I was like, wait, who's in it again? Yeah, Severus Snape's in it. That guy, Lu Lufus, Lu Lucius, Lucius uh, Black, Sirius Black's brother is one of the heads. Sirius Black's in it, Order of the Phoenix, Harry Potter, final answer. Uh, that is correct. I think you're wrong about who was in it, but you got the bonus point even as well because you got Harry Potter. It's in the Harry Potter universe. Their purpose was to defeat Voldemort, but it was made out of Harry Potter and his friends. It's like a secret order that they create among the students, I think. Really? I actually don't. I, yeah, I can't. I mean, Chris put it in there, uh, but, uh, and I have only no, seen no, a couple no. of the movies. No, 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 no. Here we you go. Are? Literally, uh -oh. the original members of Order of the Phoenix include Sirius Black, Emmeline Vance. Uh -oh. I don't know how to pronounce that. Let's see. Is Lucius in here? He should be. Because uh, Alice Longbottom, um, Sirius Black. Oh, it's probably Sirius Black, not Lucius, because Lucius was uh, the werewolf man. Oh, well, yeah, was founded uh, by Albus Dumbledore to fight Lord Voldemort and his followers, the Death Eaters. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so Lily Potter right, was in it. James okay. Potter was in it. Yeah, all the all the parents of all the iconic characters were in it. So I remember. Right. So you got, not only did you get, you got like double bonus points for knowing the lore behind it. Good for you, man. Okay, well, yeah. I mean, I've seen Harry Potter, so... No. That is one of the ones I do recognize. Okay, I'm ready. Keep going. I'm ready. Right, last high. one, man. This is for quadruple bonus points. You can take the whole thing in this one if you get it right. Nat Turner's Rebellion. Nat Turner's Rebellion? N-A-T Turner? Yep. Nat Turner's Nat. Rebellion. Nat Turner's Rebellion. Nat Turner's Rebellion. See, I don't even know who Nat Turner is, and I... I I hope that's not a super like if this is real history, I'm ready to learn. But uh, if it's like a very prominent figure, I'm going to be embarrassed. <laughs> Nat <laughs> Turner. Nat Turner. Is Nat short for Natalie? I don't know. Natalie Turner. It's going to say it take place, uh, took place in London, in the UK, like everything else. Um Final answer. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what it was. Uh, what Cameron, it? you got to learn your American history. This was an American event, historically known as the South Hampton Insurrection, was a rebellion of enslaved Virginians that took place in Southampton County, Virginia, in August of 1831. Led by Nat Turner, mm -hmm. the rebels killed between 55 and 56 white people, making it the deadliest slave revolt in U.S. history. The rebellion was wow. effectively suppressed within a few days. At Belmont Plantation on the morning of August 23rd, but Turner survived in hiding for more than 30 days afterwards. So this is wow. early as an early slave rebellion as things were starting to come unraveled in the United States leading to the Civil War. Wow. Okay. Yeah. There you go, man. There's you my American history. New. Maybe I'm just super, you know, I gotta look into all history, you know? Yeah, right. Not just yeah, the good and the bad and the and the yeah, and not the just Turner. history. 
but herstory, herstory, too. <laughs> herstory as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, we don't just study you know, our heroes; well. we study our sheroes as well. Sheroes as well, you know. But man, that's just that's just there's so much history in the world, and I'm so you know honestly, I did terrible at this game, but I'm glad I learned a little something, and that's what I uh, that's what I like to do. So good game, Chris. Great good game. game, Chris. And you did great. Yeah. And you got a good attitude because uh, if you learn something, then it's never a wasted experience. But uh, absolutely. That's it, folks. That is it for this episode. We appreciate you joining us as always. Uh, if you want to watch this, go to our YouTube. If you want to listen to it, it's anywhere we listen to uh, podcasts, any platform. Uh, yeah. Send us your ideas, folks. If you want to send us an email to pcfmpodcast at gmail.com or uh, slap us a message on our Instagram. Uh, for any future episodes, we got a lot of good ideas actually coming in from people about future episode ideas. So I appreciate we appreciate oh, yeah. that because it's uh, I go three years in, it's, it's, it gets harder and harder to come up with subject yeah. matter. This desert is about. becoming barren. We need yes. we need the ideas, Cameron. All right. Well, with that, folks, cue music. <laughs>